All right, good morning, everybody. Just checking the microphones on because, oh, do you know what I did the other day? I will get into this episode, but do you know what I did the other day? I was speaking at the Spanish conference and uh, it was it was this week. So the week we're in right now, it was the 5th of May. And I, so I'm supposed to be <laughs> the podcasting digital marketing expert on this panel. And uh, I was with three of the panelists and, uh, sorry, two of the panelists. They're really good guys, really good people. And uh, so everyone's doing the introductions and I'm, I'm like, obviously high energy. So I'm going, hello, everybody. And, and they're like, Dean, Dean, Dean. I'm like, what? What's going on? What, what, what? And uh, they said, Dean, um, you're on mute. I'm like, I'm not on mute. I'm not. It's not muted. It's not muted. It says it there on Zoom. And like, you're on mute, Dean. What's going on? What are you pointing at? And he said, is your microphone working? I'm like, oh, oh no. I turn my computer off. Every time you turn your computer off, you need to press this 40, 48 V button or something. And I'm like, oh, shit. And everybody starts laughing at me. And obviously, I go bright red. So what a start to the first ever self-storage conference in Spain. And I basically, I just said, oh, I've got all the gear, no idea. <laughs> and my palms are sweating. I'm thinking, oh, God, how close is this Is this camera? Can people see me sweating? And I, I actually, I'm like, oh, God, right. So I can't, I can't look like I'm going like that because it looks, and by the way, people are for the podcast, I'm, I'm rubbing my head. And I can't look like it because it looks like I'm real nervous and I'm, I've gone bright red already. My palms are sweating. I can't, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, but what happens if the sweat running down? I'm like, oh, this is a disaster. And it's literally 10 seconds in. I'm like, this is untrue. And before that, I was genuinely cold in the office. And then I was just boiling, thinking, who's turned on the heating? This is too hot. Oh, man. Yeah, it was. Anyway, welcome to Saturday morning. It is episode 438. I don't know where this all came from. Right, so we're talking about better. There's a book called Better Today. And it's all about um, the medical industry. And I have no idea why I picked up this book or why I started reading it. I just, I found it in my library and thought, well, I've, I know I've got recommended it from somebody from somewhere, but I don't know where. And fundamentally, the over, the, I'm going to give you the overall view of a book. It's looking at things and assessing them, thinking about them and finding out ways to improve. That's what I took from the book. And so, yes, it is all about the medical industry. It's all about the doctors. I'll, I'll go through it in a minute. It's all about surgery. It's all about medical care, etc. But fundamentally, fundamentally, when you strip it all back, what us business owners can get out of it or what us entrepreneurs can get out of it or what us as people can get out of it is very, very simple. We can get out of it the fact that it's all about improving. It's all about looking at the results and going against the grain sometimes, but just trying to see where we can improve, what we can test and how we can get better and better given time and not just accepting Good results, because good results, good is the enemy of great. If you're good right now, you will never, ever be great. That's the problem. That's the problem with goals. As soon as, you hit, as soon as you've got your goals, you're good. You're good. And so where is the reward pushing forward to risk the good to get to great? That's why my goals now are going to be astronomical. I'm going to do a full episode about goals. Uh, very, very, well, I'll say very, very soon. I'll the next 30 episodes. Out. So we'll see. Um, so, yeah. For me, it's all this book is fundamentally about improvements and how we can improve and what we can look at and and just looking at ways that we don't accept mediocrity, we don't accept good, we only accept improvement. And that is what the book is about. So I'm just going to run through very, very quickly because it splits it up into sections. So first of all, it's talking about the importance of hand washing and how that improved. Um, the whole industry of healthcare. And first of all, when people suggested hand care and, and washing your hands, they got ridiculed. Can you imagine that? Got ridiculed. You don't know what you don't know. So back then, washing your hands and making sure you cleaned your hands for so many minutes, uh, whatever it is, it was alien. It was a new concept. Just think now, there's going to be new concepts that come out that are alien to us right now. But we're doing stuff right now that is killing us. One of the things that I've been learning about and listening about is all about the electrodes in your house, um, the Wi-Fi's, all that sort of stuff. I believe from listening to all the health podcasts I listen to that in ten years' time, maybe even sooner, that you will you will have a specialist electronic firm coming into your house and and protecting you from these sort of waves. Um, there's loads of people doing it in America right now. It's not really talked of in the UK too much. Um, 
and and just making sure that we're protected from this. We didn't know smoking was bad at the time. We didn't know hand washing was bad, didn't we? And now it's all this Wi-Fi and stuff, and there's more and more. Um, uh, I, I talked to one of my friends, Liam. Liam sometimes listens to this. Um, and he goes, um, so you're telling me Wi-Fi is bad for you? I said, yeah, mate, Wi-Fi, it'd be really, really bad for you. And but he said, well, your, your body's getting hit with it right now, right now, right now, all the time. I said, yeah, that's what I mean. And so you will have these protected areas in your home where it won't be as bad We've been hitting with each. Anyway, because um, I've got, I can see a tower, a mask. I've, I've got a beautiful view. And right away towards the race course, I can, I can see um, a massive mask. It's miles away, but I can see it. And even that, I don't, I don't like that because I just feel in future that will be classed as dangerous. And I know it's woo, 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 woo at the minute, but mark my words, in 10 years' time, the electronics, the leads, the electrics around your house, you will be protected in a different way that we're protected right now because we didn't know hand washing was good. We didn't know smoking was bad. You know, and it's all these things. As, as we grow as a civilization, you learn more and more. Don't you? That's why, obviously, the lifespan increases. Okay, and then it goes on to suing. Uh, how, how much doctors get sued and stuff. And oh God, it's horrible. And so that's a very interesting chapter. And then a really interesting one is frontline care. Um, and it's called like the magic, I can't remember how long it is, but so it, the, the, after tests and tests and tests, they, they realize that frontline, if front, frontline, so for the forces, for the army, um, when you get hurt, if you can get treatment within a certain amount of hours, then you're, you significantly increase the chances of, of surviving and then different vests as well to talk about different vests and how that that came into um like bulletproof vest how that has helped and it's 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 raised the rates from so i don't know whatever it was to 90 percent survival rate and so it's all these little incremental changes that make a big difference um what else the rights and wrongs of uh the death penalty and how doctors feel about giving the injection oh man can you imagine if you're a doctor and you've got to give a death penalty Ugh, no thank you um, so yeah, the rights and wrongs about that. Um, Beth, oh, check these. Some of these stats are unbelievable. So Beth, obviously a full chapter about Beth and how it's improved over the years and how it goes from uh, bad in the 1930s to, to substantially better now. So listen to this, mid-1930s, giving birth was the most dangerous time in a woman's life. One out of 50, this is the 1930s, less than 100 years ago, one in 150 women died from giving birth. One in 150 women died from giving birth. That's incredible. In the 1950s, one in 2,000 women died. Oh, that is so much better. That is so much better. Now, a woman dies one in 10,000 births. So it's increased from one in 150 to one in 10,000 in in 190 years. That is bonkers. That is phenomenal. Love it. But this is a scary fact. In the 1950s, newborn baby, I, I rewound it and listened to it again to make sure it was right. In the 1950s, newborns died one in 30. So one in 30 babies died in the 1950s. That is horrendous. Horrendous. And even, even this one, I, I think is horrendous. But in the United States right now, one baby dies in every 500. So it's increased. The survival rate has increased from one in 30 in the 1950s to one in 500 in whatever the year the book was written, maybe 2020, say, for example. That That's still far too many. That just scares the living daylights out of me. Ah, oh, one in 500. Oh, it just, I'm thinking about my son's school and stuff. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking how much, oh, that means that one one person there must have, oh, it's just, uh, it's just don't bear thinking about, does it? One mum there must have had a death, giving birth. I mean, oh, so it's still too regular, but that just shows you the improvement, the little, in, in, little small improvements you can make over time, fun, massively make a big, big difference. And it's, it's all about the little improvements that we can make. And it's all about medical care. I, when I started listening to it, I thought, I'm not going to enjoy this, but it's bloody all about medical and stuff like that. But I really did. It was really interesting from hand washing to suing to frontline workers to the rights and wrongs of the death penalty to birth. Oh, it was, it was fascinating. I really, I recommend it. It was an enjoyable book. It's one of them books where I didn't have to take loads of notes. And so I could run on my little merry little way. So that is it, my friends. Uh, tomorrow we're talking about retirement. So check it out, my friends. See you soon. Bye-bye. Much man love to each and every single one of you. Bye.